guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla, and today's video is going to be about lining, different techniques of lining. So I'm going to show you one way to line over here and then another way to line over here. A lot of people always ask me where do I get my sketching pencils from and why do I use them? There is some actual like, you know, history behind like using red and blue and like the Xerox machine when it comes to old like art animation, but these are called the Prisma Color Call Erase Pencils. They are erasable colored pencils and I like to use them to sketch with because it either adds like a nice cool tone to it, like it depends, like it's a cool like blue tone or like a warm purple tone. This is a very warm purple. Here it is. But the vermilion adds like very nice warm tones. So that's why I like to use the Prisma Call Erase Pencils and they do erase pretty well. It depends on the paper that you use. What would be better to line your artwork with for a more professional look. I have colored pencils here and I have all these wonderful colored micron pens, like lining with actual colors. Very similar to like what you would do with digital art. You know, you would go back, you would outline and then you would go back and you would try to match your outline colors and your lining to the colors around what your actual subject is. And we're going to do this with alcohol-based markers. So I have my Ohuhu markers here and I'm going to see if these or these would be better with lining around it. First of all, can I jump in here really fast in the voiceover and say I am so sorry for my mic. I tried an external mic that my husband had and I tried plugging it into my camera's body and instead of using the inbuilt camera that's already inside of it and it just, it's not the best. It is not, it's not working. So it's not going to be in any future videos, that's for sure. But I wanted to explain, hey, it's Meriwether, our favorite fairy from Sleeping Beauty. Well, she's my favorite because I just, I feel all of her emotions throughout the entire movie. But here you are having Mary Weather all like upset and pouting because she has to be a, I, I like to call them dummies, you know, the, the dress things that you put pin stuff into, it's just like a replica of a body. So she's being <laughs> a dress dummy for Aurora's dress and I just love the expression. So I'm gonna take more of like a tannish color. Um, it's kind of a sepia tone, 05 micron, and I'm gonna go and do all of her like skin areas. This is actually a sepia toned Copic 05 liner. Now Meriwether is wearing like a bluish, a light blue hat, her little pilgrim hat that she's wearing. So I'm gonna actually go around and I'm going to line with a PN and it's like a dark navy blue. And then for the rest of the dress, I'm gonna line with my pink PN Micron. When you are going in and approaching a color lining, you usually want to pick a darker version of the color that you were outlining. So when I was looking at the reference photo and looking at what I had, this pink was darker than the pinks that I had picked out in my Ohugo markers to use on the messed up Aurora dress. Aurora. <laughs> Now that everything is lined and colored, I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring with my Ohuhu markers. So you'll see throughout this whole entire process of this time lapse that all the colors that I'm choosing are, you know, quote, quote, lighter. So yes, just keep that in the back of your mind when it comes to lining. If you want to line in color, even in digital art or in like pens, like microns or even paint, this would apply for paint. Uh, if you just want a more professional look, make sure you're lining with a darker color than that. It could be just like a few steps up than what you were outlining, just so it's nice and dark. Cause you can see like, her bonnet is a light blue, but I lined with a navy blue that's a PN of my microns. And then for her hair, she does have black hair, but I wanted to make her have like midnight blue hair. But you see how the navy and the midnight blue, they actually complement each other. You can kind of still see it just a little bit. 
And you're probably wondering why are you teaching about lining? Okay, I've had several students in the past that hate lining or they just don't get it. And I try to teach on it. And sometimes, you know, it, it's, it's a hit and miss when I'm trying to teach on it or explain why it's important. But it is important. You have to realize it's so important because you have different line weights that you have to get a grasp on. And if you ever want a tutorial on line weights, I would love, love to teach you guys um, just tips and tricks on line weights when it comes to like lining thick or lining really thin. And it's all related to shading. That is the one core design value that I teach all of my students is lining, or I call it tracing <laughs> or sharpieing because some of the kids don't understand when I say lining and they're just like, what do you mean? I mean, go over your pencil marks with a Sharpie. And I usually have Sharpies for like the little kids. And then for the older kids, I have like Stabilo pens, which are great. They're wonderful. And it's such the 1.0, it's such a great width for a tip and it's great for kids to get used to lining. The best thing that I love about lining is that it gives a professional touch. Just adding, you know, a solid black line around everything and it's such a fundamental thing when it comes to cartooning or animating or anything, any animation. I mean, CGI is a different story because my goodness, everything is so flawless these days so you can barely see any lining. But with original 2D animation, it's so important and it's so beautiful. I will always love 2D animation. It's almost like finalizing your projects when you're done sketching it out and then you go over your sketch marks and with a liner, whatever liner lining tool you choose, it's it's satisfying. It's aesthetically pleasing to the artist's eye and you being the artist. Um, I actually used to hate lining a ton and I didn't start lining anything until I was in high school and I actually just started like getting crazy with like shading dresses and just making sure everything was lined and colored in my sketchbooks so and that was I was in 10th grade when I started doing that 10th and 11th grade I mean my sketchbooks were flawless they were beautiful everything was shaded with color pencils and it was lined to a point but before that I hated lining absolutely hated it everything was just like sketch marks with like pencils and nothing was colored but it's okay that's what sketchbooks are for again they don't have to be perfect but I went through like this perfectionism phase with my sketchbook where everything had to be lined with a Sharpie pen and everything had to be colored with colored pencils. And it was good old Crayola. If you guys do want to pursue art as a career, then you're going to realize that lining is going to be a very big role in your art and in your life, especially as an illustrator or a 2D animator. You're gonna have a lot of lines. I mean, if you look at anything, if you watch any of the new cartoons that are coming out, like Amphibia, or if you look at um, any like, you know, like Owl House or something like that, then you're gonna realize there's a lot of lining in those types of shows, like Hilda on Netflix or goodness gracious, there's a, and as you can see, when I was talking that I'm actually cross hatching with my designated colors and I'm going back in with a purple in those darker areas where the pinks were just matching up too much. And once again, I would go back to picking a darker color than what I'm using. And I totally didn't press the record button when I started. <laughs> I came back when I was uploading everything and I realized, oh my goodness, I did not press the record button when I was doing the introduction on how to line with colored pencils. So I went ahead and I chose a different image on the other side of Meriwether of Simba because I'm doing Lion King again for the, sh for the school that I work for. We're doing the Lion King Junior for the little kids and so I get to design the set again for the Lion King. And here is Simba on the giraffe's head. I don't know who the original artist is but this image is just so much fun and I had to draw it. Alrighty, now that I've sketched out my next little doodle, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it like backwards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to color it first with my Ohuhu markers, and then I'm going to line it with pencils. 
there are some projects, like I said at the beginning of this video, where I will go in and I will use my Ohuhu markers before I even begin to line. And that might be because of what the medium is. So for example, if I'm dealing with like watercolors, I'll go in and watercolor and then I'll line on top of that. It's just, it's a, everybody has their own preference. Usually the reason why I do it personally is because I realize that my paper is not working with my liners and my Copic markers. I think I told you guys about the Crescent Render Sketchbook where I realized that all of my uh, liners and my Ohuhu markers, every time I used it, even though they don't blend with each other on different types of paper, they were blending and smearing and ruining all of my drawings in that particular sketchbook. So I realized, okay, I need to go in, color with my uh, alcohol-based markers first, and then I'll go over and line it. But didn't really have a lot of fun with that. So it's just different. I like to line when it comes to using color liners or regular black liners. I like to line and then color, but you, you'll you find yourself if you realize, oh my goodness, this paper is not going to allow me to do this. So you go in and you color first and then you line second. But I would suggest with colored pencils, you definitely want to line second because alcohol markers should go first before colored markers because they do not mix well with colored pencils. So if you want to go in with your colored pencils and then, you know, you want to draw and use your alcohol-based markers on top, it doesn't work well and it doesn't really look good. And it kind of gives like a weird chemical effect, especially since these are soft core Prismacolor pencils. So they have like an oil base in them. So I, I've ruined plenty of pictures that way. But once again, if messy is your style, then messy is your style. Alrighty. So the next step I'm going to do, I'm using Prismacolor pencils and they are soft core in case you guys ever want to buy. These are my favorite colored pencils. I really like these and I like Faber-Castell, um, if that's how you can say it, um, <laughs> Faber-Castell Polychromos. So I really like those and then I really, really love these. So I'm going to use these. I already picked out like the darker colors to line. I'm going to go ahead and start lining the giraffe with a crimson lake. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. Now I'm going to use the dark brown to go ahead and finish like coloring in the giraffe's hair and everything else on the giraffe. And now I have my terracotta and my mineral orange that I'm going to use on Little Simba. If you guys like the way that the colored pencils look on top of your alcohol-based markers, you should try it with watercolor. So you, once again, the process is you will sketch it out and then watercolor and then do the colored pencil lining technique on top of that. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. And you're just like, I Beatrice Potter of the best. <laughs> Another thing that I really like to do is I like to go in and I like to like shade with like terracotta or something. So just shading around with colored pencils on top of uh, alcohol based markers is really nice and it comes out looking very, very beautiful. So I'll go around just like how I was doing the cross hatching over on Meriwether. I'll go around and I'll use d these different four colors and I'll just shade and cross hatch where I think it'll look the best. I see a lot of portrait artists do this as well, this exact same technique where they'll do their base colors in alcohol-based markers, any kind of brand, and then they will start shading the faces with their colored pencils. So if you're really interested in doing portraits of like animals or people, I see a ton of artists use this technique where they have their good 
base color of like their skin tones or the colors of like the fur or whatever and then they go in and they shade with um, really nice pencils, either Prismacolor or Faber-Castell Polychroma. So if you're interested in that, this is a great approach. And there you guys go. There is a fun different way to line. I usually just love using just a black liner and just doing cross hatching and everything. But if I ever want to do something more professional looking, like if you get commissioned or something, then these two approaches are great. If you ever want something to look just pristine and professional and clean, lining with colored liners or lining with colored pencils, they really look fun, great, clean, and beautiful. But yeah, I hope you guys give this a try and I hope you all have a most wonderful day. Bye!